Um, if you don't know, uh, every week we do these Zooms mostly, and they're on our website. If you can't find the link right here under the click hamburger button, we'll say Habitat Zooms or Digital Presentations. Let's click that. You can find the link there. These are a lot of fun to do, so I'm grateful for you guys joining me. Um, the uh, last tour, I think, is getting close to being filled up. If you haven't signed up for that exhibition, it's going to be a lot of fun. We can talk about it. It's been updated on our Habitat website, going from port to port through Europe, visiting tons of artists and studios and institutions. It's uh, an incredible thing to participate in if you have yet to. Um, our Glass 52 exhibition, we're putting the final touches on that now. We uh, we brought in, uh, I think, uh, uh, Richard Jolly now to do a demonstration. We just talked ac across the street at the glass blowing facility over there to have a grand opening party for us on Saturday for the before the public comes in. So the public comment can come in and do a little demonstration and see a little demonstration and see how glass is blown, maybe even participate. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, the the, the pre-party is May 1st and it runs through the 5th and the grand opening is on the 4th. But our VIP weekend is really where it's at, which is the 2nd through the, through the 4th. So plan on being there in May of this year. It is a lot of fun. Everybody comes together and we have a great time exploring glass. We're going to be going to the Flint Institute of Arts. We're going to be previewing the Paul Stankert video. The documentary just came out that there's no place to see that yet unless you go somewhere in person. And we're going to have it being played at Flint. And Flint is doing the honor of giving us uh, a participation in their big theater to show and screen this film about the legacy of Paul Stankert. Uh, Stephanie Trenchard has her first ever glass class. So if you ever think to, thought about creating uh, in a new way, she's going to be putting us class together and you actually get to walk away with something afterwards. And then, like I mentioned, Richard Jolly and John Miller both doing demonstrations. One will be doing it at the Axiom facility across the street, which will be our friend uh, Richard Jolly and John Miller up at Flint. Uh, we're going to be cooking with John, so prepare yourself, which is a lot of fun. So without further ado, we're talking about Blown Away. So how many people have got through the entire fourth season? I, I love, I'd love to see... a. Um, a raise of hands. Let me stop sharing and and see who's who has. I know I have. Corey, have you finished the the season yet? You can raise your hand or put a thumbs down. <laughs> Not yet. No, Michelle, you haven't finished it yet either. Unfortunately, I know who wins already, but uh, <laughs> but I haven't finished it. I'm slowly getting through it, and you know, I, you know, I, it's it's uh it's on. Let's say it's on all the time at our house. So <laughs> we have it on. Um, it's it's tough because the whole family wants to watch it. So my wife comes in, she wants to watch it. She missed an episode. We're back. The kids missed an episode. They're back. So I'm I'm down to watching it maybe two or three times per episode now. It's uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> That's about right. I see Megan's finished watching it. Well, it's great. I, it was a lot of fun to see. I, I like to see they leveled up the prizes at every single episode. But overall, we're going to be talking about you know the the um different things that the show has to offer. Let me pull up my list real quick. I have it in my PowerPoint. So let me pull it, go back to that and we can talk about, you know, the, the show itself. I know we've had the winners in the past at the gallery. It's great to see them all. It's great to see such a supportive community talking about and sharing about sharing glass with, with, you know, the world through Netflix. And um, so it's great seeing, you know, all four seasons cast. We have the first season here. They were the uh, experimenters trying to get through the first show, and they did. It was fun to watch. I didn't catch this one the very first time it came out. It took me some time to get to it, but I was hooked right after. You have a second season uh, cast members. Can't imagine walking into this facility and just having a chance to figure it out as you go. And I hope it gets better every single season with the, the way that the... the the process works and the materials that are there to use, but everybody's so talented and they make it work. Now we're at the season four uh, members, which are, which are so, which are so great. And it's great to see them come together. So I'm going to stop. Actually, I'm not going to stop sharing. We can talk about the first topic. Maybe it's the, um, Aaron, before you do yeah. that, I just want to say something really quickly. Um, I did some research on Netflix and I found it um, something very interesting. They said that they cancel, um, if there is two seasons, they always plan one season to two seasons, but something has to be unbelievably successful for mm -hmm. them to go to a third season. So usually their goal is to do a one, two, and then cut it and go on to the next one just for you know financial purposes. So it's fascinating that this has lasted a three and a fourth due to popularity and a Christmas special. 
Yeah, I haven't seen the Christmas special yet. Have you watched the Christmas special at all? Yeah, yeah. I have to catch back to that one. I didn't. I did, those kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't looking for them, but I'll have to catch back to them. Hey, Aaron. Yeah. Something. Um, I interviewed for it, and, and they were Marvel Media made it, and then they pitched it to Netflix. And this, even though it was shown on Netflix, my understanding is this season was bought by Netflix. Where before it was a production company pitching it. Oh. So I'm curious to see where that goes in the future now that they've bought it. That's impressive. I hope it stays. It's interesting that you mentioned that now because they might just start dabbling in other mediums now that they have this kind of process in the can. I can't imagine anything as exciting as glass, but you never know. And that would be kind of fun to see if it grows in that kind of way now that they do own it. But um, first question on the fly is the exposure to diverse glass blowing techniques was the first topic of to talk about with the show. And I think it's kind of an eye-opening experience. You, I would say, you know, maybe one in 10, maybe one in 20 people have seen glass blowing in person. You know, Corey, do you have an idea of what that number would be maybe? I think it would be. Uh, you know, I have no idea. But every time I go to Greenfield Village, you know, and I watch them blowing glass at Greenfield Village and I and I bring my kids and I swear they've gone like 30 times. Every time is like the first time. So it's like, oh, my gosh, what are they going to do? What's happening? And it's so hot. And, you know, Michelle's on here right now. And I know she's she handles a lot of classes and courses and and a lot of demonstrations. But, I, I you know, it's, it's just amazing. It's 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 different every single time. It's not the same repetitive. And I don't care if they're making the same thing. There's always the dangers and the excitement that goes along with it. So yeah, every time is like the first time. Yeah, I would imagine. So seeing... I mean, you're getting glass blowing. What's interesting too is you're seeing a lot of artists that work with a glass blowing technique, and then they throw a process of glass blowing at somebody who's never done it before, or they've done it. It's been 20 years, or it's been they've tried it once, and they're learning on the fly, and they take that challenge on, and they create some very fun and very interesting things in a short period of time, and. It's interesting also to see like the different eras. You have some people like Karen Wilbert Johnson this season, who's been working with glass forever. And she's an incredible talent. We show her work at the gallery and newer artists that I've just met the first time on the show. And they're able to stand together uh, and work together in such a positive way and, and, and show what they do with these techniques. It's a lot of fun. Um, I suspect over time, they're going to, Keep keep coming up with different topics of what they should approach with. Like, thing about yourself is usually one they co copy a lot, diving into their own personality. Then they usually have a guest on the show. I remember they had someone from the circus once they come on the show and create, and they had to create themed works using their own styles and techniques. And I think people can watch the show and get ideas of what they could create in their own style. But it kind of it kind of exposes people like I've never seen before. Me too. You know. I I would like to see um, Bowling Green has a glass Olympics that they put out every year. And so they have their students like run through and do specific uh, things. And it's just like Netflix, it's timed. So they have a certain amount of time to, to produce something in that particular period of time. And what I find really fascinating about this, this series is you have artists like Rob Stern last season. You could pretty much make anything on the end of a blowpipe. The guy's incredible. You know, just, you know, he's worked with every artist you can possibly think of. You know, he's been the main gaffer for a number of artists. And then on his own, he, he, just, he, he has a sense to understand the material much better than just about anybody on, on that show. However, he didn't win. He didn't come close to winning um, because, you know, I think it, it takes a lot of you only have a certain period of time to make what you want to make. And they, they, you're like, you're right. They're spitballing these ideas at you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. I got to make these ice cubes now. And you might be the most sophisticated thing on the planet, but an ice cube might be the most difficult thing because you haven't created an ice cube in 20 or 30 years or ever made one in your life. So <laughs> right. it, it does, I kind of really enjoyed that particular aspect of the of the show. I see that we have John Sharvin joining us today. He's welcome to unmute himself and add to the conversation anytime as, as he live through the the, um, the the actual experience of creating on the fly what do you what do you think john i saw you on mutant yeah um hey everybody um so yeah the i think the 
challenging thing for the show is, you know, people often ask, like, was the time limit exactly the time limit? I'm like, yeah, they're actually like, you're not allowed to talk to your assistant ahead of time. You can't do any of that. It's a new studio, you know, a new assistant. It's a strange glass they use up there. So, like, with those hurdles already to, like, get thrown with a challenge and then do a, oh, I'm not, there I am. Okay. Um, and to, like, then make a piece with it you're you're kind of you know if, if it's you have five hours to make a piece and you know that piece is going to take you four and a half hours to make <laughs> you only get one shot at it so if it breaks you're like well this is kind of a big risk so i was i know on my season i was constantly uh battling with one is this idea good can I make this in the timeline and then should i make this mm -hmm. um because like if i if i screw this up at any point i don't really have a chance to restart and try again so it's kind of like a one-shot deal you get on these uh these things you try to limit your uh expectations on what you can do and be like i'm gonna do that i think i can make it i'm confident enough let's do it that's so interesting but yeah i've seen people turn in broken pieces and then what you mentioned too about the glass being weird that's the first i've heard about that uh, it's it's weird in the sense of well, I guess not the the glass the the glass studio. It is first first and foremost a it's a TV set it is the first and foremost thing of that. It looks like it's all metal and industrial. It's in a factory, but it's mostly spray foam and 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 plywood <laughs> on a lot of stuff. So like some stuff is not exactly the way you think it is. You're like, oh, I'm just gonna hang this pipe up there. They're like, don't do that. That'll catch on fire. You're like. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh let's not do that. It looks great. It's like I, I was convinced some of the brick was brick and I had to like put my finger into it and it was just <laughs> foam and I was like, holy crap. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, I heard I've heard the mystery where you're trying to work on something, you bang against something and it turns out it's just foam spray painted. <laughs> that's a wild, but that's what the show that's showbiz is all about, right? If we were all on the showbiz. set, we would know that. Pretty funny. Let's go. Let's go to the first topic, which is a yeah, the second one is. Celebration of Artistry. So it's a really great show, you know, and it's great to have something about art that constantly gets updated on Netflix every year, knock on wood. And I don't think there's anything else like it out there. So I think it does have a really great focus on the arts. And over time, I hope more and more people get exposed to it. My guess, if you go to a place like Greenfield Village, like Corey said around here, and you see glass blowing for the first time, they may mention it to you and say, hey, go watch it on Netflix. You'll see more and more and create more exposure. So I think it really is a, a great opportunity to get the arts out through a medium that we all have most likely, whether we like it or not. I've tried to cancel my Netflix account about a thousand times, but it always stays on. Long I'm, I, The Apple's the one that comes and goes in my in my world. But I think it's overall great. And the, the pieces they create are so incredible and able to be put on display in the gallery in the back and you can watch like the gallery shrink, but I think the pedestals get bigger. <laughs> so at the end of the season, you have like three people on display and the pedestals take up pieces, take up most of the display, which is very fun. The next topic is educational value. Well, I guess that's definitely true because you're educating people who are watching the Netflix show who are getting the exposure for the first time for glass. Maybe they've been exposed to painting before. Maybe they've seen ceramics, maybe bronze, but I would overall say that it is it is a great educational experience, especially because you see the ups and the downs and you learn about every individual artist and their story and their narrative because without that, they wouldn't have a show. There's drama that's created. I understand that. But that's important for the show to get viewers back. You need that. I, I Like John could probably, and, and John Moran would tell told me this too, John Sharvin was like, they really enticed you, would that be the case, to say things or do things that would... Be a little more dramatic than your natural personality. Did you say that, John? Yeah, that was a, a very, you know, interesting part of it. Uh, also, is it's not that they're like, oh, say this. They just kind of would like slowly kind of reel you in to like say something. Um, <laughs> there was another artist, like for example, like there was another artist um in Pittsburgh that had applied for the show at the same time I did, and he didn't get on, and they had asked me about him in one of my like face-to-face -face interviews. And I was like, where did that come from? Like, they just kind of throw you off and try to get you to say something that's a little like, you know, dramatic to, yeah, to keep the viewers because it is a reality TV show after all. Um, and 
yeah, you, you want some of this drama and like, <laughs> you know, whatever that is. Um, but we learned quickly to not take the bait. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's yeah. interesting. I, I would probably too. The idea, like you could see it, like I could see it. Like when John Moran was on the show, he was such a nice guy, you know, and he's in the, in the last season, um, I can't remember the artist's name, but it'll pop up when I pull up the Reddit comments we'll talk about later. Um, uh, like how they were insistent on him talking himself up so much. Like I'm the best here. There's no way I'm going to, I'm going to lose the show. Everybody's here just to walk off. And it, it got to the point where people were annoyed about it. So much the fact that they commented on Reddit um, and I guess that's part of showbiz and keeping people entertained on top of seeing the actual techniques and the in the in in the actual people behind it. So um they're they're taking what what our world, mixing it with that world and making it work, which is which is pretty amazing in my mind. So I changed the top word to demystification of glass as an art form. Um I think this is kind of an interesting topic because it is kind of amazing to see people work with glass and it is kind of amazing to put two into the gallery. people come into the gallery a lot and they ask about techniques they ask about you know how things are made you, you explain it you give them the 101 you know as best as you can but you don't you know you're not giving them the whole spiel and you're not giving them the visuals and this show gives them the visuals it gives them the excitement gives them the energy you watch the gather you watch the fire you watch the the glass fall on the floor and break and you start to see the kind of pattern from a to z to create something excuse me in the window obviously that you're given but it is kind of amazing and i'm really happy that they actually do that because a lot of the artists that watch and we'll talk about this kind of watch the beginning and then they skip to the winners and they skip the process part right because they they know it all they the artists have seen it they've made glass they've blown glass before but people like myself and people that are coming in to enjoy the show, it's really important to watch the whole entire process come together and the struggles that the artists go through, whether it's real struggles or uh, enhanced dramatic struggles. It's, it's the funniest thing when you you see a perfectly amazing piece in the blowpipe, and this is in the last this current season, and the camera's right above it, right? And then it falls off and breaks, like right in camera square. Like I couldn't even do that plan that perfectly and I, I felt a little whistle go off my head say so oh that was kind of staged but that's part of the drama but it is amazing to have uh the glass be made live on netflix uh at your fingertips i, I do want to say one thing about this kind of slash the last one if i could like yeah the, the i think the one criticism i've heard about the show is uh, about the process and kind of like what is glass is they do not show the cold working side of glass they talk about it a little bit here and there and that is one one part that is not talked about in the show that it makes sense why they don't show it because it's very slow um you know like so like alex bernstein you know his work is mostly cold worked it's very nice and they don't really showcase the uh cold working side of things in my opinion it's the one critique of the show i have that they don't show which produces just the amazing artwork that they just don't really talk too much about yeah, I agree. I mean, I would love to see, I know it's, there's a time constraint in the show, but I would love to see like um, a uh, a slideshow, like maybe four slides of each artist doing cold work in the studio, just to show that that's part of this process because you don't see it. You're right. And and I've seen a lot of artists complain about that. And I do understand why it's not as pretty. I mean, we do demonstrations at the gallery. Am I going to show fusing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Am I going to show carving and cutting? You know, it's, it's, you get the idea of it. Come watch me cut this glass. But I do feel like it does need to be added in some shape or form. And I think they could take, you know, th three seconds per artist to show that cold work, at least in a photo slide, to show that something's happening. Learn more about it. I love that, that you're using the word slides. It's great. <laughs> like a, pro a projector. Like but a projector. I think there's only a couple of artists I've met and actually enjoy cold working like rick back for example he's like I, I put my earbuds in i go outside i mean it's so grueling to to do let alone watch you know it's like the but it is like stone carving so i mean but there are some really um interesting techniques i think what 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 we're missing here is listen if the show was about people blowing goblets would it be as interesting 
it's it, it wouldn't you know it's the fact that these that the artists are challenged to make art to make something that that they you know that pushes uh, their boundary it's not just 100 percent technique and i think that that's the one um, issue i have with the show is that they got to break more into where do these artists draw from their inspiration yeah i can, I can see that too they kind of they kind of bring that in usually early in the show when they have them make something representing themselves and but it's not so much inspiration towards their technique and career but more about them as individuals but that could be kind of fun to incorporate i see elliot's joined us thanks for joining us elliot great to have you here for a little talk we're just having a dialogue about these different um uh, details and, and celebrating blown away so thanks for being here um the next one, inspiration for aspiring artists. So this is a great one for John and, and Elliot, since you guys are here. Um, I suspect after you've been on the show, you've met more people, <laughs> a lot of more people that have come up to you to talk about it, talk about what they wanted to do. Maybe they were just starting glass or just had generic questions. Have you felt the show itself has been inspiring for others? Well, hey, uh, it's nice to be here. Great to have you. Um. I mean, from from my perspective, uh, being in the UK, obviously it's uh, it's a much sort of smaller scene than in the US, and I and I hadn't actually visited the US until uh, the last gas conference, so that was a bit of an eye opener for me. But I can definitely say that in the UK, it's definitely sort of um, opened up the um, the idea that people can actually pursue this as an artistic career, you know, pursue the material and, you know, it's done a lot of, it has done a lot of good. That's great. Have you had, you had a lot of people ask you to be your, your assistant from it too? Like, um, I mean, yeah. study under you, clean your floors, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, our my studio sort of like um, it's quite. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a it's a single sort of furnished studio, um, and I don't really like you know I'm not looking to expand it myself, so I don't even like people in there doing classes and stuff, which does actually happen like one weekend a month. But um, I don't want too many people in there, so you know we've had uh, we've had quite a few applications for like new assistants and people cold working and stuff but i i tend to sort of like to keep it quite small and do a lot of the work myself uh but we have had a lot of people in for like internships and stuff which is really good to sort of get them you know get them into the idea of how these studios work and stuff like that so yeah it has been good that's great john you have anything to add no i was just gonna say i mean uh in, in the u.s you know it's definitely a different um scene of glass but very similar uh, to what Ellie was saying is uh, I've had several people come up and like, there was one, actually one artist in particular I was thinking of, he was, uh, he was like 18 when the show came out and he was just going to college and he came to see a demonstration I did at Pittsburgh glass center. And he was like, I really want to go do glass. Like I didn't want to go to this school. And I'm like, you should do it. You know, like, and I was pretty honest with them that like, it's a hard career path to take, but like, it is something you'll do the rest of your life. And he actually went to college for glass and he just got into, he just got a scholarship at Pilchuck this summer. And I was like, awesome, man. Like way to go. Like, it was very cool to see, a, you know, this young, um, young artist, like be really passionate about it. And he's actually making some really interesting work and I'm uh, excited, you know, very new to glass, but it's really, really awesome to see uh, some of these young uh, kids getting into glass. And, and honestly, some of the glass programs here in the States, uh, have been kind of struggling with uh, enrollment uh, for, you know, BFA yeah. programs and stuff like that. And I think it has helped in some regard. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I agree. Like it's, it's you got to start somewhere. You're right. And that's kind of fun that they had a small talk to you to create that motivation. Michelle, before you go away, I wanted to ask you at the glass Academy, if people had, uh, if people had come up mentioning the show at all and said, Hey, is there possible I can learn something I saw on Netflix? You're muted. Go ahead and unmute yourself before you answer me. <laughs> I definitely want to hear you. Okay. Um, I had a fire going outside because it's so nice finally in Michigan. So that's why I un undo the thing. I'm no still worries. listening to you here. Um, you know, our customers want to know more about the challenges. I appreciate hearing the artists talk about some of the back ends because it helps us on our weekly show answer questions and engage more people. So customers, our classes have risen and I hear glass blowers everywhere saying that that has happened. 
And our goal is to kind of have that swimming with the dolphins experience, but then scoot them to the gallery and have them purchase. And I think the show has been very successful in doing that. That's great. That's great to hear. So definitely inspires upcoming artists. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, exposure to diverse glass blowing techniques. I don't know if this really gets covered much. They kind of just throw the artists into the fire and expect them to come up with stuff, but they do cover some things. People make Marini, people make rondelles. So, and they do other techniques on the fly. I suspect it's not as um, a top topic for people because they don't really go into it too much. They maybe give them a, like not even a one-on-one, but a quick glimpse of the style and techniques. That's the overall feeling I get. Anybody else want to add to this one? Because I don't really feel like it's going to be a real class. It's more like just a quick glimpse. I, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's the whole format of the show, I think, in general. Kind of what we were talking about with the cold working. Uh, is that like, yeah, in a perfect world, this would be like an hour long show and you could go into depth on like actually the technique of what you're making. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a 30 minute, 25 minute show. You can only show so much. So it's. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I suspect a, a lot is left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think a lot of people have picked up on the idea that there are different techniques in glass blowing, especially. Um, you know, you were talking about the classes before, and it's like we get a lot of people on the classes now, and they're like, you know, mentioning um, in Calmo and stuff like that, and asking why they can't actually <laughs> have a go at that. And it's like, well, it's just two cups of glass stuck together, isn't it? And it's like, you know, when you want to go into the real intricacies of some of these techniques, like John said, there's not enough time on the show, and uh, you know, you would need to dedicate a lot more sort of in-depth uh, time to that sort of thing, and that would take away, I think, from people being able to watch the finished pieces being made and things smashing on the floor and all the mm -hmm. added drama that they want to put into the show rather than just geeking out on glass techniques. <laughs> yeah. I think it, I think it isn't covered much. Like you're right. It's just an overall generalization to mix in with the real drama that's going on. So glad we talked about it and had some thoughts put in. I ran out of artwork here as I was putting artwork in so celebration of artistry. Um, this is kind of fun to back to the kind of the first question where we mentioned about celebrating glass. Now we're celebrating the arts itself. And I think we kind of covered this one in the first answer where it's exposure on a new medium, which is Netflix celebrating the art that's created on a single platform. So we can probably skip this one. Educational value. Well, we kind of covered that one too, didn't we? Where we had um, the artists or people watching, getting educated on glass, maybe seeking out more um, interesting topics, but, in glass so i think it's educational in itself is it perfectly educational no but that's not the point it's more entertainment and then accessibility of glass art which i think is kind of fun too where new students are able to come up and create if they choose to and get more interested in and then i think the other side of it is people watching for the first time who have never collected glass before and they have an opportunity to see it being made and maybe they'll open their eyes up to maybe something that they would want in their own personal collection and meet the artists. Um, they don't really talk much on the show about the camaraderie. <clears throat> I mean, they do talk about camaraderie, but they don't talk about camaraderie with the clients, the people that are in the contemporary glass art world. And I feel that could be fun to incorporate with. They seem to bring on judges a lot that are part of the art world, but I've not yet to see like Dorothy Sachs or someone be on the show who would be, I'd love to hear, see her opinion from her perspective, especially since she chooses the, um, the, the Sachs Award every year at the gas conference. And that could kind of bring in that personal touch that people actually buy the work and take it home, in my opinion. Corey, anything to add on that, Corey? No, I think you're absolutely right on that because here we are. We're it's almost like The Bachelor, you know. I I, I watched my wife watched that. I don't watch it. No, I watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're watching the show. It's like a you know, okay, what happens? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? We're going to take that away. No, it can't possibly. Oh my gosh, it is. You know, it's a, it's a surprise, but it's like a cookie cutter way of uh, every episode. It's like, oh my gosh, you know. And so they 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 almost have to create drama in a way if there is no drama. To, or or those you know like you said the 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 videography you know let's bring in that camera let's watch it explode let's watch <laughs> that flame come up you know um but you know after it's all said and done what do they do they plop it on a pedestal 
And then they have these people talk about it. Like, oh, I don't feel like that was uh, really, um, you know, they're really uh, putting their emotions into the piece. I'm like, I, you know, like, they had one hour to put their emotions. In. What do you mean? What, maybe a lot of sweat. Uh, you know, it's like, it, I don't know. Um, but, you know, then they're putting the pieces out. But essentially, you know, I'm looking at it. You have to create a piece, but they're all demo pieces. I mean, what? And then afterwards, like, as John said, you got a cold work and half the piece could be just cold working. You know, um, More. yeah, yeah, I, it, it's it's unbelievable. So, I mean, yeah, it's missing a couple elements. It's missing a couple elements. Where does it go afterwards? Where do people acquire work? How do people acquire work? You know, where is it? What's the purpose? What's the goal? Is there a story? You know, where's the connection between all these artists? Were they connected at Pilchuck or Penland or Haystack or anything? How about schools like RISD, you know, or, uh, you know, even Washington and I, all over the place. There are schools and there's professors and there's teachers. So there's a whole, uh, you know, movement, so to speak, where everybody is so connected down the road. And if somebody successfully tells that story, then it, it be it grows out of the Netflix series into a documentary. And I think that that's what's kind of needed uh, to, to really push really push what we're, we're trying to portray, really push the, the, the dialogue. I kind of agree of, with you. Of, with yes. That, this the, is the, the missing call to action, right? That's what we're missing at this. You, you dived in, you learned about, you watched it, and now we need a call to action of somehow get involved. They do bring on, I think the next slide might be information for responding. I'll come back to that. Well, there was one about, um, it obviously isn't showing up about the institutions, right? So the people they bring on to judge, that that's relevant to glass where they have, you know, this most recent season. Um, they, they know they've had corning obviously there every single year talking about and selecting the institutions of where people can kind of go and see the glass, but there really isn't like a um, specific call to action to go see more. It's based, not even like it ends so fast that you can't even enjoy the winner. You know, it's, it's like watching, I've seen like, I mean, every single game show out there that the person wins, the money falls, and then the show's over. And you're like, oh, I wanted to have a follow-up dialogue, a celebration. Maybe you can answer this, John or, or Elliot. When they're filming and they're showing like a highlight dialogue of you at every single episode, it looks like they filmed that all at, at one time and just cut it into the episodes. Is that what's happening? Well, it's funny you were talking about um, the end of the show and it feeling like, you know, it's just like a real sharp line and a full stop. Um, when uh, the second season uh, finished, obviously it was right on the edge of the start of the uh, the COVID pandemic and all the lockdowns. And while they were filming my um you know, my my very brief winner's speech, they were literally ripping the whole set down around me. So it felt the same for for me as it as it seems on on the show, really. You know, as soon as it's done, that's it. You're out. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I, I believe it. What do you got to say, John? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is very abrupt, um, very abrupt end. Uh, so like, you know, when I got voted off on my season, it's like, they're like, okay, like you get, get off, you do a quick like exit interview. And then I don't even know if they showed it on my season or not. They film so much content and they put almost none of it in. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, as you're like walking off, they're like, okay, so what flight do you want to take tomorrow morning? <laughs> you know, they're like, like, get the heck out of here. Like as yeah. soon as you can, like they, they, you're gone immediately. It really is like very abrupt. <laughs> But when you say about how much content they filmed, I mean, you 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 have like three interviews per episode and they go on for hours sometimes, you know, and it's just I don't think I've ever spoken so much in my life to like one other person. You know, is, is so, that, yeah, is, is, is all that filmed at once? Are they bringing the episode up and then asking you questions about it and then doing the next one the same sitting or are they doing it right after? No, no, it's 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 all done like sort of sequentially. Okay. So you have like an initial interview about the previous um uh the previous challenge and then you have another interview going into the next one and then you have another interview to review that so they're quite sort of sequential and then you have to obviously speak about yourself 
um, as if you're there making the piece at that time. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of like recapping. Oh, can you just say that again? But I did rather than I do or all this sort of, you know, different sort of syntax and stuff with it. So it was quite like um, it was quite interesting learning how they put how they put it all together. But when it comes to the edit, I mean, you sign a disclosure at the start saying they can do whatever the hell they want with the edit. You know, so you've got bits that are taken from the start and put in at the end. Mm. Things you didn't quite say that are sort of hacked up into little sort of sound bites and stuff. So, yeah, it was that was the most interesting thing for me, like learning how they put these things together and how like uh, TV works, you know. Yeah. Michelle, you had a question. Did you raise your hand? Go ahead and unmute yourself. I did. Um, I think this is an awesome opportunity for you guys, because after the first season, I emailed Kathy Gray and I was just like, what do you guys do for the artist after the show? And her answer was, and it's true, we just don't hear it. The show is made for entertainment. It's bringing awareness and, and shedding light on this whole series of work. And I really think it's a great opportunity for you guys as gallery owners to be like, cool, let us exactly what you're doing today. Do the Zoom call. Let us do the back end. Let us carry the artists. Because I know from experience, that's not my strong suit. That's, you know, I'm in the studio producing work. I'm not out hawking it. So mm -hmm. if we have someone like Vincent Van Gogh's brother on our back, like helping us out, that's really where you guys can come into play in a good way. Yeah, it's pretty fun. What's what's cool about this 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 show, which is kind of interesting is um you know netflix has the rules where you can't you can't you can't take foot photos or you can't and then you're trying to put, pick a picture on your cell phone of the show to promote it it's all locked up and down so you really can only show it and, and see it on, on netflix because they lock it all down and it's hard to like share the the videos with people unless they go home and they turn on their own netflix and watch it but a lot of people are doing that which is getting kind of exciting everybody who i talk to in the gallery that comes in if they haven't, if they don't mention it on the way in, I mention it to them on the way out because it's like another sales tool for them, for us, for them to go home and turn it on and start diving into the world and enjoying and laughing and crying and being part of a, you're like part of a team for that particular season as, as a viewer. And then, you know, just like it abrupt the ends for you. And I mean, in the newest season that they, they changed hosts. I don't know why there's a lot of speculation, but as soon as you are, are as soon as you're the person to vote it off, he just says, "Okay, get out of here!" Like right there at the end, and that's that's how I feel like you're treated. And listen to John; it's exactly what happens. It's like you've done your part for the show. You've been as, as you're fired. You're out of here, and that's how it's going to be. But that's again with the drama that that we talked about with uh, John and Corey. So it's a lot I of fun. Show, I yeah. think the show needs to elaborate like the the overall ecosystem which i they're pretty sure they're completely unaware of you know the all these artists and dealers and museums and institutions and schools are all connected in some way and it's it's really kind of incredible i mean think about it i mean this is i i love the show because it exposes so many people to what's happening but what's next where do they go you, you know they go to there's only one place in the world do they have to go to corning i mean where are there's all these different places they can go to earn and to uh to explore or to like you said purchase you know all, the, all these different galleries that that support these artists and, and so on and so forth so you know i think it would be great to maybe somehow be able to promote that aspect, that connection of all these different um, individual elements or attributes or, or artists, you know, and just, and just show people that system, that that ecosystem exists, it's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way, I think, you know, um, that it could be promoted successfully. I really do, you know, um, but I'm very of. excited. I mean, think about this, think about it. you're an artist. And you're like, wow, I can make a living doing this. You're watching it on Netflix. You're looking at. You're seeing it. You're like, "Wow, you artists do this for a living." It's like it's unbelievable. So I mean, you know, I love the exposure, and and how could you not? And so I, you know, I again, I think what they're doing is amazing. But I know that there's uh, there's definitely a future of of exploration. Yeah, I like that, Corey. There is definitely. I mean, you have to view it in our perspective as a tool. Right. It, the, this is another tool to expose people to what we know and love, whether you're just and whether you're just um, first time exposed to it, whether you've been a collector for 50 years. Right. Imagine you've been collecting for 50 years and you're obviously starting to see people around you start talking about glass 
and no one's cared about it around you because they're in their own world known things this is a quick little uh, jump into the glass art world and an important entertaining part of it so think about that what's interesting too is like where do you go afterwards to talk about the show right i when i was going on to reddit to do a little research for this there's definitely some serious dialogue about every single season everybody has their own opinions on who should have won who should have lost what people are making who's talented who's not and there's no real like uh, other place to have a dialogue about this particular uh entertaining entertainment show and it would be interesting to be able to have something out there that people of like mind you can go and talk and meet each other and learn from each other and that could be something we work on too so um yeah so that wraps up all the questions i've had this is a completely open forum too so if anybody has any other questions or anything else to say you're more than welcome but it's been great to have you all talk about the show i hope you all finish season four soon if you haven't it's a very entertaining season they leveled up with the surprises of what people win after the episodes, which is very, very cool. And it's great to see some talented people work. You watch the same kind of drama ups and downs as before. And uh, who knows? We'll have another season five before we know it. But thank you all for joining me today for this little dialogue. It's great to get together of, of all our friendships. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. And um, next weekend, we have an auction up, obviously, uh, on online with some small scale objects. Please check it out. If you have any questions, we're going to be talking about it next week before the before the Zoom or before the auction. We'll do a Zoom for you to choose to, to explore. And I'll be joined by probably Corey Ferd and I just to talk about every piece before the show, before the auction goes live. But that's it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you all for being here. And we'll talk hopefully real soon. Bye bye.